As I begin today, I would like to acknowledge the Pambalong clan of the Awabakal people, the traditional custodians of the land in which I am presenting today. I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. My name is Rebecca Lim. I am a researcher at the University of Newcastle and as a researcher affiliate with the Hunter Medical Research Institute, where I am a member of the Brain Neuromodulation Research Program. Today I'll be presenting uh, some information about a type of tumour that grows uh, on nerves and this is a condition called acoustic neuroma. And I'll be presenting this today for a Brain Awareness Week in 2023. So what is an acoustic neuroma? An acoustic neuroma is a tumour. It's a very slow growing tumour. It's considered benign or non-cancerous. And this particular tumour grows on the nerve that carries information from our inner ear to the brain. And it's carrying this information from our hearing and balance organs on that nerve. Okay, so the incidence of acoustic neuroma is between three and five people per 100,000. And the age is typically between 30 and 60 years. However, we know that there are an increasing number of these acoustic neuromas being detected in uh, people of advanced age. And this is because as we're uh, growing older, we're having some more imaging done around our head and neck regions. And therefore, there's detection of quite small growing acoustic neuroma, uh, uh, these tumours growing on the nerve. These uh, tumours are spontaneously occurring. So the vast majority are spontaneously occurring. So about 95% are spontaneously occurring. And then 5% of these tumours are uh, occurring due to the growth of a, uh, a genetic disorder. And this genetic disorder is called neurofibromatosis or NF2. So it's a, a, a genetic disorder where there are tumours that will grow along the nerves of the inner ear. So what are the symptoms of an acoustic neuroma? The first one of these is hearing loss. And most often people will uh, start, as, as we get older, we, we tend to lose our hearing. But there's also this increased um, hearing loss in, in one ear. And they can also develop a tinnitus or ringing in the ear. So this is where it sort of starts to differentiate from just a normal aging process where we lose our hearing. So a person will have hearing loss as well as this ringing in the ear. So it's in the same ear. And there's also an increased pressure or oral fullness. So just like when we go up in an aeroplane and we feel that pressure building in our ears, that happens uh, in people with acoustic neuroma on just one side. People can also develop dizziness as well as balance problems or unsteadiness on their feet. And this is because the inner ear is responsible for both hearing and balance. Now, these are the typical symptoms of an acoustic neuroma and people will typically then go to their doctor and become diagnosed with the condition. However, as the uh, tumor grows, if a person doesn't go and, and get a diagnosis, that uh, tumor can become larger. And as the tumor becomes larger, it starts to press on other nerves that are really in close proximity to the nerve that carries the auditory and balance information uh, to, to the brain. So that can cause facial numbness and or pain, so pain around the face. And it's always on that same side uh, of the ear that has, has been affected with the hearing loss and, and dizziness issues. And if that tumour grows uh, quite large uh, without being treated, then the tumour can begin to press on the brain, part of the brain called the cerebellum, that is responsible for coordinating and controlling our movement and gait. So tumours that grow really large can compress those parts of the brain for movement. And again, if they're not diagnosed and not treated, they actually can become fatal where they'll push on the brainstem and this brainstem is really important for controlling vital functions of our body. So let's think about what an acoustic neuroma is. When we hear the word acoustic, that relates to our sound or hearing. So we always think about the ear when we think about auditory and acoustic. Neuroma is the growth or tumour of nerve tissue. So here we've got a little picture that shows this dividing nerve cells. And so that's what happens in a neuroma. There's nerve cells that will grow and proliferate uh, and form a tumour. But the interesting thing is with the acoustic neuroma is that it's a misnomer. 
what do we mean about a misnomer? Well, it's inaccurately uh, using that phrase or term or description because an acoustic neuroma isn't actually affecting the hearing itself and it's not uh, affecting nerve cells. What it actually is, is called a vestibular schwannoma. But we always uh, tend to refer to it, and often in medical circles, uh, research, we, we tend to still have this dual uh, terminology of acoustic neuroma and vestibular schwannoma. So let's start looking at what a vestibular schwannoma is. So what is it? Vestibular is relating to our sense of balance. And so we can see on this little movie here is somebody walking on a tightrope. So you've got to have a really great sense of balance to be able to, to walk across a, uh, a canyon like that on a tightrope. But for everyday life, our balance system is constantly working. It's constantly working so that we can maintain and maintain an upright stance. It allows us to maintain and fixate our gaze appropriately so that when we're walking and moving, we can look at our environment and see what it is without it looking too... Um, so it remains in focus. So our balance system is, is really incredibly important. And we don't tend to think about our system of balance until something goes wrong. And when we see the word schwannoma, what it's referring to is a tumour of Schwann cells that surround the nerves. And I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in a little while. But what we can see here is a nerve. So this is a, a nerve. And when a, a a surgeon opens up that nerve, what there is is a tumour that's growing around these nerve fibres and that tumour can be removed. So schwannoma is a, a, an exacerbated growth of Schwann cells. So now we know acoustic neuroma is actually a vestibular schwannoma. So let's now think about what our sense of balance is doing. So first we'll have a little look at our balance system. Our balance system is located in the inner ear with our hearing organs. So we can see the external ear and we can see the ear canal, which is here. We can see our eardrum. And then in here, deep in the temporal bone, we have the organs of hearing and balance. So here we have the inner ear. This beautiful spiral shaped structure for our hearing is referred to as the cochlea and this is how we can hear in all the different frequencies uh, of, of hearing my voice. Uh, if you're in traffic you can hear the, the cars and things uh, driving past. Uh, it's how we, how we hear our music. The balance part of our inner ear is shown here and we have these three regions called semicircular canals and this will detect movement of our head in three different planes. So when we think about our uh, mobile devices, our mobile phones, when we reorient them in a particular direction, the screen changes. And essentially, that's what is happening within our, in our ears. That's where we have these mini gyroscopes telling us which way is up. Information from our balance system will travel along this portion of the nerve and our auditory information travels along this portion of the nerve. Together, they are forming the eighth cranial nerve or the vestibular cochlear nerve. Now, this is important later on for when we start to look at what a vestibular schwannoma is doing. If we take a look in the inner ear, the outside portion of the inner ear is really a hard bony structure. We refer to that as a bony labyrinth. And then within it, we have a membranous labyrinth. And this is like the inner tubes of a bicycle where we, we pump up the air. But instead of air, it's filled with a fluid. And this fluid is really important for activating our sensory cells. And these sensory cells of our auditory system and our vestibular or balance system are called hair cells. And these sensory cells are located wherever we can see this pink and all the way down here around the cochlea. So if we take a little look into those areas where it's pink, we can see different types of hair cells. Now they're named hair cells because of the way they look. We have these bodies of the hair cells. So here we have a body and then here we have a body. And then poking up from the top of them up here, we can see hair bundles. And these hair bundles 
and both types of hair cells are responsible for detecting motion activity. And that's motion activity as we turn our head from side to side, as ever, however we move our head around, or it's movement of the fluid waves in response to sound activation. So our balance and hearing sensory cells are both hair cells and they're both activated in the same type of way. They're just responding to different types of sensation, either wavelengths of our sound or motion of our head. Now I'll just take a quick look at how our hair cells are working. We don't need to go into too much detail here. But what we have is a situation where we have our hair cell, we have the hair bundles. So here is our hair cell, here is our hair bundle. And if we move our head in a particular direction, we have that fluid in the inner ear that moves and causes a force on the hair bundle. And it deflects these hair bundles. This causes a signaling to occur. We don't have to worry about the details, but this signaling involves an ion called potassium, and that gets the cell excited. Then that cell will send the information along a nerve. So shown here in red is a nerve. And that information, this, the balance information, is sent to the brain along this nerve. So these nerves are responsible for sending balance and hearing information to the brain. Now I showed you that eighth cranial nerve earlier. And so that's what would be looked like. it would look like as this orange uh, nerve shown here. And then within this really large nerve, it breaks down smaller and smaller and smaller so that it shows those individual nerves from hair cells, from each hair cell. So they're all bundled together. And what we can see here is one of these nerves, a little one, an individual part. And this is part of an axon. And that information gets transmitted into the brain. Now to make sure that that information is sent into the brain really quickly, because we want that information to be received quickly so we can stay upright and for our hearing so we can hear what's coming in our environment, we have this specialization or a special type of cell that surrounds our axons of our nerves. And these are called Schwann cells. And our Schwann cells are a cells that grow and wrap around, you can sort of see that these circles like an onion ring surrounding the axons. And these Schwann cells are responsible for insulating our nerve cells. So it's like an electrical cable that's surrounded, insulating it so this signaling can get to the brain really quickly. And these Schwann cells forming this sheath is referred to as a myelin sheath. Now in acoustic neuroma or vestibular schwannoma, the problem is these Schwann cells, which were shown in this previous slide in purple, these Schwann cells grow abnormally. And when they grow abnormally, we have a tumour forming. And that tumour forms on the vestibular portion of that eighth cranial nerve. So this is the vestibular portion growing along the nerve and this is where the tumour is forming. So it's actually not forming on the auditory portion but you can imagine this is a really tight space within our ear, within our brain, making its way into the brain. So that as the tumour gets bigger, it starts to compress and push against this auditory part of the nerve. And so that's how these uh, the Schwann cells that are growing and forming a tumour will result in problems with hearing in our in, in environment because the nerves that would typically take the information uh, from our hearing organ, the cochlea, to the brain are now being compressed. It's also compressing the vestibular portion of the nerve and causing dizziness and balance problems. As I mentioned earlier, if that tumour is not diagnosed or if it, is, it grows too large, then this uh, acoustic neuroma of vestibular schwannoma can become very large. What we have here is a picture of the brain, and this is the underside of the brain. So if we're looking up this way, we would see the underside of the brain. Here is this acoustic neuroma or vestibular schwannoma. And we can see here, it's really starting to push against some important parts of the brain. And if it becomes too large, it can become life-threatening. So why do our Schwann cells sometimes grow abnormally? As I mentioned earlier, this growth is spontaneous 
And when we have spontaneous growth of our Schwann cells, we don't understand why it happens. So what are the treatments for acoustic neuroma or vestibular schwannoma? The first treatment is watch and wait. Because these tumours are quite slow, typically quite slow growing, that's a, an advantageous thing. Because it's slow growing, uh, we can uh, watch and wait. So imaging will be done to measure the size of the tumour. And then after a period of time, uh, if there is uh, no progression of those uh, balance or hearing problems, or if there's uh, no development of, of facial numbness or pain, then what can be done is that a, a rescan can be done at various intervals. So a second thing that can be done is uh, radiotherapy. Radiotherapy uh, can be done where uh, radiation uh, doses are typically done stereotactically, and this is usually done with a single or very uh, small number of doses that are administered. And the third option as a treatment for acoustic neuroma is the surgical removal. And in some instances, depending on the size and the location of the uh, neuroma means that uh, sometimes if it's a smaller tumour, uh, if it hasn't really impacted or impinged too much on the auditory nerve, sometimes then a cochlear implant can also be done to uh, restore some of the hearing ca uh, capacity for the patient. So these are the treatments for acoustic neuroma as things currently stand. What we don't have now are therapies for acoustic neuroma. And I've been fortunate with my team to receive funding from the Brain Foundation to start developing some therapies for acoustic neuroma. So this is some research uh, that we've begun. This is tissue from a person that has donated the portion of their inner ear, the vestibular portion of their inner ear, um, during surgical removal for, for treatment of the uh, acoustic neuroma, the balance portion of the inner ear has to be removed. So this is a part of the, the balance organs. And what we can see here is uh, a portion of tissue and in red are some hair cells. And we can see that there's hair cells still remaining. We can see cell nuclei of all of the, these hair cells as well as the supporting cells around it. And we can also see in green some structural protein. And this is a fairly normal looking piece of vestibular tissue. So what this indicates is that the tissue is fairly normal looking. So if we can develop treatments and therapies for the acoustic neuroma, we might be able to uh, prevent any further degradation of balance and dizziness and hearing problems that occur in acoustic neuroma. So what are we going to do? Okay, so what we're going to do is first up look at what other treatments have been done in other types of cancer. So we have here is a schematic diagram. And this is a diagram, we're not going to go into too much detail, but this is a diagram of what we're going to target. And within our nervous system, we have a complement of these uh, proteins called neurotrophic factors. And our neurotrophic factors are really essential for uh, the uh, dif differentiation, proliferation, and survival of our neural cells. However, there are instances where these neurotrophic factors uh, under some um, signaling have uh, triggered the stimulation and survival of cancer cells. And so we're going to target a particular set of these neurotrophic factors. So we have a neurotrophic factor called nerve growth factor, NGF. We have a precursor protein to that called pro-NGF, which is this protein here. Nerve growth factor or NGF and pro-NGF will activate these signaling processes via receptor. This receptor is called P75NTR. So NGF can directly target P75NTR, whereas pro-NGF has to target or has a cofactor called sortilin, and together these will then activate the P75NTR receptor. And when these are activated, we have this intracellular signaling pathway, and this can cause survival and proliferation of our Schwann cells. What we've done already 
is looked for these particular proteins in the tissue from a vestibular, uh, vestibular schwannoma donor or acoustic neuroma donor. So here on the very left-hand side, we have P75 NTR. In the middle, we have sortilin, and on the right-hand side, we have NGF. So these particular trophic factors, receptors and cofactors are present within the tissue from a donor with acoustic neuroma. So what we're going to do is use inhibitors. And these inhibitors are going to block NGF, P75 NTR and sortilin. And if we can block those particular trophic factors and their associated factors, what we're hoping is that we will knock out this pathway. And if we knock out this pathway, we're going to st stop or slow tumour growth in people with acoustic neuroma. And so that will prevent or delay the surgery that is required for the treatment of acoustic neuroma. Because they're slow growing, uh, our aim is to really add these inhibitors in and to slow or stop growth. And the other potential is to add these in for people that have had a removal to prevent a recurrence of the tumour growth. So this is the team that will be working on the project. Uh, our ear, nose, throat surgeon, Associate Professor Rob Eisenberg. Uh, Professor Alan Brichter is working on the vestibular uh, tissue with me. And we also have our cancer collaborators, uh, Professor Hubert Hondemark and Associate Professor uh, Phil Jobling. I would like to thank our donors for generously supplying and donating their inner ear tissue for this project. I'd also like to thank the generosity of the uh, Brain Foundation for uh, funding our project. And uh, if you, anyone has any questions about acoustic neuromas or vestibular schwannomas, as you now learn the, the correct name is, please contact me on my email, rebecca.lim at newcastle.edu.au. <laughs>